Now we need to look at page uh, 14 and 15. Okay. Um, and one day the stream has started yet. This is 
the one before this, right? Anything there that tells you about him, how he feels about going to school? Again? Confused? Where? Okay, no, I think that was just basically like he just wants to know what the mother is talking about. Right? But when he finds out what the mother is talking about, okay? I just think you need to learn more than I can teach you. I mean, come on, Augie, you know how bad I am at fractions. Okay? What school, I said, I already felt like crying. Okay? And even before that, um, don't you think you're ready for school or me? Okay. So when people ask you that question and then you say no, right? Um, it doesn't really immediately show that you're you're fearful, but you're you're what? How do you feel about going somewhere and then you say no, I don't know? Very what? Sorry? Come on, you can answer. Making mistakes is part of learning. Reluctant, yeah. That's a good word, right? Okay, does reluctant mean fear? No, it's not, it doesn't. Right, sometimes you're reluctant to do something because you don't know what to expect. Right? You don't know what to expect. You kind of like, uh, you're reluctant because you don't like surprises, for example. Or just that your assumption, you have an assumption that oh it's gonna be difficult so I don't want. Right? It's something I won't I won't like sometimes. But sometimes when you try it really you go, hey, I enjoy this. At first you were reluctant, but when you had the experience, you you welcome the experience. Right? So it doesn't this this so what we can say is from these two pieces of evidence from pages eight to ten, is that he felt both reluctant and at the same time intimidated. Right? Okay. Reluctant why? Because he immediately say, are you are you ready for people? Are you ready for school? No. Right? He in, the, in other words he immediately rejected the idea. Yeah? Okay. Can you write it down? So from, from the question and then his reply is said, is there a one? I don't know. So he no I said. The question was, aren't you ready for school? Don't you think you're ready for school? No, he immediately said no. So this was his show. This show he, he rejected the idea. And how did he reject it? He rejected it. He, 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 immediately. And what does it show? It shows that he is, he is reluctant. Now this is not exactly the structure that we teach you, but essentially you can see the evidence. Where's the evidence? Yes. Where's the evidence? No, I said. Okay, but of course you have to have the earlier question, the mother's question. Are you ready for school? Right? So you have this quotation, that's the evidence. What's the explanation? After his mother asked him, right, he rejected the idea. Immediately. When his mother asked him whether he was ready for school, he rejected the idea. This is your explanation. What does this mean? This means that when his mother asked him, he rejected the idea immediately. Right? And then where's your your elaboration or your link? Right? What does this show? You show that he is reluctant. This is your answer, isn't it? Right? In other words, this could have been on top, the point. Remember? Right? So you answer with the point. He was reluctant. Okay? He was reluctant, right? About going to school because when his mother asked him if he was ready, he said no. This means that he rejected the idea immediately. Yeah? You understand what I mean? Okay, so it's it's the same structure but in a different uh, order. So this is the P. The point, this is your evidence, and this is your explanation. Okay. 
Now, getting this right is very important. Right? Because you have to objectively explain why you respond in this way. The question is, how does August feel about going to school? I think uh, he feels reluctant to go to school. Why do I say this? Because from the passage, you know, when he came, his mother asked if he was ready, he said no. This means that he rejected the idea immediately. Right, which shows that he is very unwilling to go to school. Do you understand? And when I did the last part, what did I do to do it? Reluctant? I rephrase with another word called unwilling, which is the same thing. When you're reluctant, means you're unwilling. Right? Remember when you were young, you were reluctant to bathe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I bathe early in the morning. Right? Because I think the whole idea of bathe is so long winded you have to get wet la. especially if you got long hair then your hair gets wet after that you will dry your hair and your hair is all over the face right for some of us now right with the brush teeth okay some of us like I, I love to bathe but I bathe very fast like five minutes okay this is very refreshing right in, in this kind of weather you know why people don't like to bathe Okay, so we have two parts. The second part is from the chapter driving, and it says that in chapter driving, it says um, everyone will stare at me at school, right? So when you read something like that, you have to look into his mind and ask, what is his feel? What is he feeling? Everyone will stare at me. Put yourselves in his shoe, and how do you feel if people were staring at you? Obviously, you will feel very intimidated. Remember when you were small and you went to somebody's house and you hide behind your mother? Behind your, your mother's leg. If you were this tall, hide behind your mother's bum. Right? Or you behind your father's bum. But rarely behind your father's bum because your father likes to break wind. Unexpectedly. <laughs> right? They suddenly, oh sorry. <laughs> okay. Joking on Right? See, it's, when you're small, a lot of things are quite intimidating. Meeting new people, visiting a new place, uh, you know, you know. Yeah? But I tell you, uh, you give a small child a big feel, uh, they start running. Right? See, mud start to roll. Roll first, complain later. Okay. Right, next question, number four. Did you feel the same when you went to school for the very first time? And that is your own personal answer. Right? How many of you were uh, happy to go to school for the first time? Okay, good. One. One. Sorry? Sorry? Yes. Did anyone feel like that? Yes. Joy. Hey. Were you filled with joy? Hey. Okay, enjoy it then. Uh, pretend to be a teacher and teach me an alphabet. 
in our world, Sesame Street. And my first day in school was primary one. And I was very excited. Why? Because I was going to wear a uniform. <laughs> I still have an image of that day of me putting on that uniform. I use grey pants, white shirt, white or yellow, I can't remember. Okay? It was Mata Primary School. Mata Primary School. Um, close down already. It's, it was in McPherson. You all know where McPherson is? Yeah. Okay. So Mata Primary School, Primary 1. Very excited to go to school. Primary 2, I changed school. Why? Because I moved. I moved from McPherson to Gilimat Road. Can you remember where is Gilimat Road? You all know Old Airport Road, the office center? Yeah. I'm near there. Cassia Crescent. Right? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm a nerd. I've always loved going to school. <laughs> Learning things, you know, like science. Interesting. Yeah. I'm a bit like uh, Oggy. He's a bit of a science nerd. I would make my own experiments at home. Why are you not a scientist? Huh? Why are you not a scientist? Because I can do whatever I want. Oh, and I choose literature. No, like, science is my hobby. Like. I, at home, I make lithium batteries and stuff. Like. Do you believe me? No. Too bad. Okay. So, do you feel the same way? So, this is your own personal answer. Number five. He's the principal of my new school. I answered. That means he's in driving. What does this line tell you about the way August feels about going to school at the end of the chapter? He's convinced about what? Because when you say this, he's convinced, but it doesn't reveal much about your answer. He's convinced about what? Be more specific. He's convinced going to school is what? That going to, he's convinced that going to school is going to be fun or enjoy it. Or, you know, what? Good A good idea. Right? Okay, so I started with the answer. He's convinced, but you need to be more specific. He's convinced, right, that going to school, because you have to give context. Remember, I talked about giving context. When you answer, you have to give context. Context is what is going on in this? What, what is the question really asking about? What is the context? So, the line says, he's the principal of my new school. So when, I think at this point, Via has woken up, right? Okay, page 11. Let's see page 11, everybody. Okay. Was it 12? Oh, it's further down. Uh, it's 14, right? So who can tell me roughly, why has his opinion changed by the end of the chapter? Who were respon was responsible for changing his opinion? His dad only? His mom. His, his parents. Right? More his mom or more his dad? Mom. Oh, I think I think you're just guessing. No. I think we should do it at the text. Right? Cannot guess. From my knowledge or my memory, his dad was the one making jokes. Right? Okay? But that also helped him. How did that help him? What, uh, what did he do? Huh? Uh, I know, I know. But how does that help you? Or how does that help Oggy to feel better about the whole idea? Yes, his father did joke around. So what do, do jokes help to do? Ease the tension, right? Ease the tension. Wait, listen. So jokes or laughter, right? The father made him feel at ease. Right? Because he was very nervous about the idea. He was very anxious about the idea. Okay, but his father started to make jokes about Mr. Tushman's name. And then she, she, he used to have a teacher called... What's her name? Miss Bud. Miss Bud. <laughs> okay. So his father helped to ease the tension. Right? But at the same time, I think his mother also was very um, was very instrumental. Okay, learn this new word. Instrumental. That means she played a very important role. 
she was instrumental in changing his mind. Okay? Page 12. I'll be the only kid who looks like me. Are you there, Page 12? I'm not going to say it will be a big challenge for you because you know better than that. But it will be good for you. You'll make lots of friends, you'll learn things you never learned with me. Okay? When we took the tour, you know what they had in the science lab? A little baby chick that was just hatching out of his egg. It's so cute, Bobby. It actually kind of reminded me of you when you were a little baby. With those big brown eyes of yours. I usually love when they talk about when I was a baby. So, her mother, his mother was also very instrumental in changing his mind. Do you understand? Right? I don't want to go, I say. How about this? Can you at least meet Mr. Tushman before making up your mind? Again, his mother is the one suggesting that he, she, he uh, meet the principal first. Don't make up your mind first. Just meet the principal. Okay? To me, the mother sounds like a very good salesperson. Right? No, 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 I'm not selling anything. Just listen first. In the end, you buy $4,000 worth of the noise. Right? Okay? Okay, can you meet Mr. Tushman first? And then, and then he started going, Mr. Tushman? He's the principal, answered mom. Mr. Tushman? And then the dad, dad started going, I know, right? Okay, can you believe that name, Augie? I mean, who on earth would ever agree to have a name like Mr. Tushman? I smile. So, at this point, his father kind of took over to lighten the, lighten the mood, ease the tension. Right? Because at this point, he still wasn't ready to go. Okay? I smiled even though I didn't want to let them see of my smile. Uh, me smile. That was the first one of the person in the world who could make me laugh. Okay? So we know something about the dad. The dad is a quite uh, humorous, humorous person. Right? Uh, likes to tell jokes. Okay? Augie, you know you should go to that school just so you can hear his name said over the loudspeaker. And he, his dad, he should give a challenge. Right? Or you should just go to school just to hear his name spoken of the last speaker. Can you imagine how funny that would be? Hello, hello, Beijing Mr. Tushman. He was using a fake high old lady voice. Hello, hello, Beijing Mr. Tushman. Hi Mr. Tushman, I see you're running a little behind today. Did your car get rear ended again? Huh? What a bum wreck. So I started laughing. Not even because I thought he was being that funny, but because I wasn't in the mood to stay mad at any. Well, so at this point, I think the, the, father, the mother and the father worked together very well in yeah, convincing him. So let's go back to the question, right? He's the principal of my new school. What does this guy tell you about the way Augie feels about going to school at the end of the chapter? No, no. The question is not asking you how he changed his mind. Just what does this tell you about his... I, his uh, he, what he feels about going to school, right? So how do you answer this question? Okay, what does this line tell you about the way August feels about going to school at the end? What does it tell you? It tells me that? It's convinced to? It's going to school, right? Obviously, he's convinced to go to school, yeah, right? And not just convinced, he goes, he's the principal of my new school. How does he, how does he feel like? How does it sound like? He's what? Proud? Maybe, yeah? Another one. Remember when you're first day of school and you love to go? How do you make you feel? Excited, yeah. I think that is the, the term, isn't it? Excited, it's excited. Okay? Do you have that as your answer? If not, can you write this down? Okay, this tells me that August is very excited about going to school. Right? By the end of the chapter, he is excited to go to school. Okay, this tells me that by the end of the chapter, he is excited to go to school. We have one hour, right, today? Okay. So we will continue, huh? right? For those of you listening at home, if you like, 
Please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> it always makes people laugh. Don't know why. How many of you already know I have a YouTube channel? One. Two. Okay. Let's continue. Paging Mr. Tushman. Okay. Are we ready so far? Yes? Shall we move further on? What about Mrs. Garcia? Huh? We haven't done Garcia? Have we done Mr. Tushman? Have we finished with Mr. Tushman? It smells like hospital, okay. Page 70. Nice Mrs. Garcia. Okay. Let's get a Latin kind of uh, vibe to the name. Garcia. Hola. <laughs> what do you say? Andorra. What do you say? <laughs> what is, how do you say I? I don't know. I just said <laughs> Soy? Soy. 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 I say soy. Yeah. Before that? Soy. Hola. Hola. Hola! Hola! Sayara! Yeah! Where's the box? And I'm going to put it up the thing. Okay, I test your Spanish. What is embu hen? Embu hen? What? Oh, the big red chicken! No. Whenever they have to push something, they will go embu hen. Whenever they have to open something, what do they say? Abre! Come on, kids! Say with me! Abre! Abre! She make a YouTube she make a channel like this. Malay Spanish channel. Abre! Pintu! We followed Mr. Tushman down a few hallways. Can you imagine following the Tush? <laughs> I, I, I bet, I bet, I bet when you were small, like, you were kind of like amused. When you follow big people, you go like, Right. Was it intimidating talking to tall people? <laughs> neck pain. <laughs> and then the tall person will be like, ah, okay, I realize your neck is pain, I kneel down. <laughs> we follow Mr. Tushman down a few hallways, alright? You know, I'm sure you have an image of you, uh, United States kind of schools, right? It's kind of enclosed, there are a lot of hallways with classrooms on either side. Do you see, do you want School of Rock? Yeah, they're, they're kind of setting. Okay? And, and, and it's all closed up, right? It's air conditioned, uh, right? Okay. There weren't a lot of people around, and the few people who were there didn't seem to notice me at all. Though that may have been because they didn't see me. I sort of hid behind mom as I walked. I know that sounds kind of babyish of me, but I wasn't feeling very brave, right? Then we were just talking about this, about how when you're small and you go to new places, it's quite intimidating. Yeah, and then you feel a bit a bit less brave than you normally would feel. We ended up in a small room with the words Office of the Middle School Director on the door. Inside there was a desk with a nice seeming lady sitting behind it. This is Mrs. Gar Garcia, said Mr. Tushman. And the lady smiled at mom and took off her glasses and got out out of her chair. Okay, so if somebody is at work, she's wearing glasses, and to meet someone, she take out her glasses. What kind of glasses was she wearing? Reading glasses. Reading glasses. Right? For me, I wear two types. The one on top is for the too far, the one below is my reading glasses. Yeah? This is what happens when you get old. Right? You have to, you are both short-sighted and long-sighted. <laughs> Okay. But for that, for, for Mrs. Garcia, she's just uh, long sighted. She can see far, but she can't see near. Whatever is near is blur. Right. So for me, the bottom part of my lens is for me to be like this. So I have to look down this way. Okay. Then again, previously I have to take on my specs and do this. But with the new specs, and this kind of specs is very expensive. Four hundred dollars. No. I'm just saying, 
I'm forced to. You think I will pay four hundred if I don't have to pay four hundred? No, I buy second hand. And the word flexing is not real, not a real word. Eh, by the way, flexible. It's a mel, it's a millennial word. Okay, now. This is Mrs. Garcia, blah, blah, blah. My mother shook her hand and said, Isabel Pullman, right? So his mother introduced herself. Nice to meet you. And this is August, Mr. Tushman said. Mum kind of stepped to the side a bit. Why must she step to the side? So they you forward. Ta-da! <laughs> right, reveal August. Okay, before that was July. <laughs> It's the only time of the month, a time of the year where I don't tell the truth. Because July. July is my birthday. Oh, nobody asked. Okay, uh... <laughs> Ouch. You know what this is called? Side burn. <laughs> Cannot burn. Okay. Okay, yeah, oh, wait, wait, wait. My, my son's birthday is okay. 6th July. Four days after we didn't count. Um, twelve? No. I'm trying to forget. Okay. And this is August. Then that thing happened. That thing happened that I've seen happen mil a million times before. Wait. Has he ever met a million people before? No. So what is this called? Okay. He's exaggerating. It is a hyperbole. Hyperbole. It's exaggerated. This bag is so heavy, it weighs a ton. No. Just then, you know how much a ton weighs? Like 1,000 kilograms. That's a ton. Wow. Oh, sorry, one ton means a bit heavy meal. Wow. One <laughs> ton. When I looked at her, up at her, when I looked up at her, Mrs. Garcia's eyes dropped for a second. Okay, so she looked, was looking at August, and the woman August looked at her, her eyes dropped for a second. It was so fast, no one else would have noticed, since the rest of her face stayed exactly the same. She was smiling a really shiny smile. What does that mean? When you, you see, a, is it a real smile? Or is she, what is she doing? She's forcing herself to <laughs> Such a pleasure to meet you, August. She said, holding out her hand for me to shake. Hi, I said, quietly giving her my hand. But I didn't want to look at her face. So I kept staring at her glasses, which hung from a chain round her neck. Sometimes, do you sometimes like feel uh, kind of like uh, intimidated to look at somebody's eyes? Yes. Uh, right? You know what you should do when you when you feel that way? No, do the opposite. What? Just stay. <laughs> Hi. Then the other person will go away. Like, how should you? Right? Experiment. Hi. Okay. Make them feel the way you feel. Right. <laughs> I think you should you should try to learn because socially, listen, socially it's a bit impolite lah. If people look you in the eye, then you like no way. Can you imagine? Like, Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hello, I'm here. It's so weird. I know. <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's weird, right? Hi, I said okay, and wow, what a firm grip. Said Mrs. Garcia, her hand was really warm. The kids got a killer handshake, Mr. Tushman agreed. And everyone laughed above my head. So they're kind of like making jokes about this. This handshake. You can call me Mrs. G. Okay? You cannot call me Mr. S. Why? The moment you say why, you realize why. Right, then you, are you related to Tushman? <laughs> or maybe it's Miss Bud. Hey. Hey. 
You know why you were born four days after? <laughs> Supposed to be born on six, but then slow. Forget to come out. No. Okay. Joking, joking, joking. Okay. Yeah. I think she was talking to me, but I was looking at all the stuff, all the stuff on the desk now. I think when you're a kid, right? Listen, when you're a child. The person is not that um, interesting anymore. It's the things that they have. Right? You go to a new place, if you notice toys, uh, you go, wow! Toys! 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 Right? Or you go to a place and you see a lot of trophies. You see a lot of uh, paintings or pictures on the walls. You go, wow, you want to look at every single one. Who is this old guy already? Who is this? <laughs> You're, you're more concerned about the things that are around you. Yeah, for example, I look this side, I notice that the files are all color coordinated. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And then there's a lot of Chinese New Year decoration that should be thrown away a few months ago. No, <laughs> but it's hard work on that. Let go, let go. You know what Elsa said? Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Okay. And where you should you where should you throw it? Where should you throw that away? Into their nose! No! 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 Okay. I know you're not shy. Okay. Alright. Where am I? Oh. That's what everyone calls me. Mrs. G, I forgot my combination. Mrs. G, I need a late pass. Mrs. G, I want to change my elective. So she's talking about all the kids who approach her and then tell her all these things. Mrs. G is actually the one who runs the place, said Mr. Tushman. Which again made all the grown-ups laugh. Okay, so I need to teach you about something. When the principal says, oh, this is my assistant, he's, she's actually the one who's important. I'm not important. Right? Does he really mean what he says? Yes. No, he doesn't. But at the same time, he can't do his job without. She's saying, what is he saying? He's saying that she's a very important. Okay, of course, the principal is important, right? This one makes all the decisions, you know, uh, plans the school, uh, you know, the calendar and stuff like that. Okay, but a lot of the hard work is being done by his assistant. Okay? So he, again, what he's doing is he's being very, uh, he's trying to be modest now. Right? Trying to be modest. Like, like when you meet someone and then, oh, this is my wife, you know, without my wife, I think I can probably find a date somewhere in an alley. Right? Something like that, like, you know, that, just telling people that your wife is a very important person you know, in your life. Something like that. Okay? I'm here every morning by 7.30. Mrs. Garcia continues, still looking at me while I stand at her brown sandals with small purple flowers on the buckle. So if you ever need anything, August, I'm the one to ask. And you can ask me anything. Okay, I mumbled. Oh, look at that cute baby, Mum said, pointing to one of the photographs on Mrs. Garcia's bulletin board. Is he yours? <gasps> no, my goodness! Said Mrs. Garcia, smiling a big smile, now that I was totally different from her shiny smile. So what is the difference between the shiny smile and this smile? This smile is what? It's more... Wait, another word. Let's teach you another word. It's not so genuine. Genuine. It's a more genuine smile. So previously she was just kind of like forcing a smile out. Okay? Why do you think she was forcing a smile out? So that August will be like. So that August? Don't won't feel bad. No, but what's the yes and what's the reason why she has to do that? Do you think she felt a bit Uncomfortable about seeing how August looks. Yeah. Yes. Right? So sometimes people are a bit unprepared. Okay, and then you see how August, uh, August the office, obviously the face is a bit deformed. Not, not the usual kind of face, right? So she doesn't want to show maybe um, an awkward look or something. So she forced the smile out. But this time, obviously, you know, this time. There are some things that make you genuinely smile, right? And this time she's talking about yeah, the uh, the grandchild, I think. So she, oh no, 
Okay? And why did she smile? Why was she smiling so genuinely? Isabel said, is this your baby? Is it her baby? No. What is this? Uh, so when, when people do that, what? why does she smile so genuinely? She feel what? Okay, so the, 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 the way to say is this, yes, Isabel makes her feel as if she's so young. In other words, she felt... Yeah. Some word accent come out. Flatter. Flatter. Flatter, not flatter. Flatter is what happens to the cloth in the wind. Flatter. Look at the butterfly flutter. Yeah. So it's flattered. Flattered. Now, can it, anybody ever say anything flattering to you that made you smile? <laughs> okay. I like your shoes. <laughs> Right. Somebody heard you. Somebody heard you sing, and they go, "I like the way you sing." I look like a scary clown. Scary club. I need to buy a t-shirt. I look like a scary club. <laughs> and behind, said Medina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, you've just made my day. He's my grandson. And how do I know she's better? Because she said, you've just made my day. Alright? Make her very happy by assuming that she's so young. Alright? What a cutie! How old? I mean, you cannot pronounce the word this. It's an American accent. It's an American slang to a certain extent. You don't pronounce it as, what a cutie. <laughs> you, know? you don't. You don't say, what a cutie. Right? This is pronounced as cutie. And anyway, I can do that. Why can I do that? Because it's dialogue. Right? So I can pretend to be somebody else. But if I'm reading the narration, I, I don't say that. Okay? What a cutie! How old? In that picture, he was five months, I think, but he's big now, almost eight years old. Wow, said mom, nodding and smiling. Well, he is absolutely beautiful. Stop! Does anybody feel uh, awkward like how I felt when I read this? No, don't ask me why I feel awkward when I read this. When the mother said, he's so beautiful. Yeah. Sorry? Oh, because boys are supposed to be called handsome. No, lah. Okay? You can call baby beautiful, no problem. Baby got no gender. Why do I feel awkward? Why do I feel strange? Yes? Because Augie is around. So what? Not that Augie will be jealous, but considering his, listen, considering his situation, no, the mother didn't mean anything. The mother is just saying, oh, it's a beautiful baby, bro, bro, right? Okay? But I think I feel for August. Okay. Thank you, said Mrs. Garcia, nodding like she was about to say something else about her grandson. But then, all of a sudden, her smile got a little smaller. We're all going to take very good care of all this, she said to mom. And I saw her give mom's hand a little squeeze. I looked at mom's face and that's when I realized she was just as nervous as I was. I guess I liked Mrs. Garcia when she wasn't wearing her shiny smile. Okay? So I think August is... What kind of person? We've noticed this about August. He's very what? Observant. He's very observant, right? Okay? And very insightful, right? Very insightful. And he, he, he can tell when a person is smiling, do they really mean when they're smiling? Uh, do they mean it? Or not? And then when she, Mrs. Garcia wasn't really smiling, right? And then uh, 
squeeze the mother's hand a bit. What was she, what was she doing? Trying to give the mother some comfort. Yeah? Okay. And you know what, what I, I enjoy, um, a memory that I enjoy about my mother last time? She liked to scratch my head. And it made me feel very comfortable. Right? So now, I've written the favor for my smallest daughter. Right? And you know, we, we pray every day, right? Five times a day. So, sorry? Yeah, yeah, the Corona song. Right? <laughs> so every time after we pray, they will all uh, kiss my hand. Right? So my daughter, my daughter got special. She kissed my hand and then she will, uh, she will sit in my lap and we will hug for a few seconds. And then, uh, after that, I'll hear you. She's like my little pet. Like okay. Oh, look, we finished. Shall we go on to Jack, Will, Julian, and Charlotte? Yes, Julian! Hey. Charlotte? Why you like Julian? I think in the movie, in the movie, Julian was portrayed as someone cool, right? A bit cool. Okay. But at the end of the movie, at the end of the movie, I felt that maybe Julian is mean, not because he is instinctively mean. Maybe he is mean because of the way his parents brought him up. Because you notice that in the movie, the parents, the mother especially, right? It was actually quite, uh, quite arrogant and, and, and not very kind, not very kind. Okay? We followed Mr. Tushman into a small room across from Mrs. Garcia's desk. He was talking as he closed the door to his office and sat down behind his big desk. Though I wasn't really paying much attention to what he was saying, I was looking around at all the things on his desk. Again, huh? right? This just proves to you why he's so observant, because he likes to... He likes to look at things, right? He likes to observe. Cool stuff, like a globe that floated in the air and a Rubik's type cube made with little mirrors. I liked his office a lot. I liked that there were all these neat little drawings and paintings by students on the walls, framed like they were important. Mom sat down in a chair in front of Mr. Tushman's desk and even though there was another chair right next to hers, I decided to stand beside her. Why do you have your own room and Mrs. G doesn't, I said. You mean why do I have an office? Asked Mr. Tushman. You said she runs the place, I said. Oh, well, I was kind of kidding. Mrs. G is my assistant. Mr. Tushman is the director of the middle school, Mum explained. Do they call you Mr. T? I asked, which made him smile. Do you know who Mr. T is? He answered. I pity the fool. He said in a funny tough voice like he was imitating someone. Right, I don't know whether you've seen the movie 18. Have you seen the movie 18? The 18. Right? It, it's actually, the movie is uh, taken from a television show from a long time ago. And one of the characters is called Mr. T. And you know what he likes to say? I pity the fool. Yeah. I, mean, I what? I pity the fool. Look at the words. I pity the fool. That's his favorite line. And his name is Mr. T. And he has this mohawk like that. Yes, a mohawk, and then on both sides is, is uh, bald. The yes. white mohawk in the center. And he drives a van. Okay? You can go home, you can Google him, Mr. T, okay? He's a black guy. The black guy, right? It's a team of four people there's Hannibal, there's Face, there's uh, Madoff, and there's Mr. T. Face, Face uh, the, the, his nickname is Face because he's handsome. What's the guy who played uh, opposite uh, Lady Gaga in that movie? Uh, oh, 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 the guy who sings. Oh, 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 oh that's not his name. Oh, is it Donald Trump's voice? No, Bradley Cooper. Ah, Bradley Cooper. So in the movie, in the movie version, Bradley Cooper plays face because he's so handsome. Yeah. And the guy from Taken, you know Taken? I've got yeah. a set of skills. I'll find you and I'll kill you. Yes. Yeah. And he plays the, the leader of the... You should watch uh, the, the, uh, the AD. 
It's quite funny. Right? And then there's a black guy who plays Mr. T, and then there's a crazy guy. <laughs> We're done! Ladies no, and no, 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 no. Then, no, no. No. I'm picking a fool. I'm picking a fool. Who follows after his class. <laughs> right. Ta you know what the, the, the title track is? Dun 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 What does it sound like? It sounds like an army tune, right? Because they are all army officers. Yeah. I never asked. <laughs> You learn very fast. <laughs> Mr. S. Actually, no need to ask. No need to, no need to ask because I'm the teacher. I just tell you. <laughs>